So we've seen how to come up with the best estimate for alpha and for x min. Given a set of data, we now know how to come up with a power law that's the best fit to that data. However, this doesn't tell us anything about how good that best fit is. It could be a great fit, or it could be a really lousy fit, because maybe the data is incredibly noisy, or maybe it's not even described well by a power law at all. So we need some way to figure out the, the goodness of fit once we have this fit. So that's the topic of this video. I'm going to step through a procedure that's described in um, the paper by Closet, Chalizzi, and Newman for um, a goodness of fit measure for power laws. I'm not going to go into all the calculational details, but I do want to describe the key ideas, um, both because I think they're clever and interesting, and also because goodness of fit is a really important part of statistical inference. So here's an approach for determining the goodness of fit for a power law. Here's a situation. We have n data points. And we use those to figure out alpha and x min hat. So we follow the procedures described in previous videos for figuring out the best estimate for alpha hat and the best uh, estimate for x min. So then we now have a fit, right? We think of this as a model, a x to the minus alpha hat with x min. So what we're saying is our data is described by this distribution, a x to the minus alpha hat, we just estimated, and that this describes only the distribution starting at x min hat, which we also just calculated. So then we want to know, how good a fit is it? Well, of course it's not going to be a perfect fit, um, because there's again, noise in the data, and there's also um, sampling uh, issues as well. Right, we're only sampling n data points, so we can't exactly necessarily determine this. So um, the question then is, well, how good a fit would be reasonable to expect? So here's a way to uh, start approaching these. So first, we're going to calculate the distance between the data and the model. Right, so, so this is our model, and I'm going to think about the distance d. between data and the model. OK, and so by the model, I mean this thing we just estimated. And data is the data. So in practice, there are, I guess, different ways of measuring distance. Um, Clausette et al. recommend the kolmogorov smirnov distance, which works with cumulative distribution functions. So we can calculate the cumulative distribution for this the cumulative distribution for that and compare them and see how far apart they are. And that's the basic idea here. And so we're going to get some distance d. And then we're going to want to say, well, is that a big distance? Are they very far apart and so not a good fit? Or are they actually very close? Is it a small d? So the question is, what do we mean by big or small d? What would we sort of expect for uh, typical values of d? Uh, given a power law, maybe something that is exactly following a power law, how close would it be, um, how close would we typically be able to estimate alpha given only n data points? So um, here's how we can answer that question. So we're going to generate a synthetic set of data. We're going to generate synthetic data. And we're going to do so by sampling n times from uh, OK, so we've estimated our model. And now I'm going to sample from that model. So draw n data points, synthetic data points, or not these, they're made up data points, new data points, from this distribution. And now I have a new data set. 
and I'm going to estimate alpha and min, alpha and x min, for that synthetic data set. So I estimate alpha and x min for this synthetic set of data drawn from this distribution. So that now I have another model. Um, and I'm going to calculate the distance between the synthetic data set and this model estimated from the synthetic data set. So calculate distance, and I'm going to call this di. between model and synthetic data. OK, so original data generates a model. Then we generate synthetic data from that model. From that synthetic data, I estimate alpha and x min. And then I say, OK, how far apart is my synthetic data from the model I just calculated? So, so that's another distance, a new distance di. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this um, many times. So repeat. And in so doing, I'm going to generate many di values. So basically, what we're doing here is we're conducting an experiment. We're saying, all right, given that we have a power law with this exponent alpha hat and this cutoff value x min hat, how well should we expect, on average, to be able to fit to that given that we're sampling with n data points? So. Um, we do that many times. We, we try estimating alpha hat again and again and again, and we're going to get a lot of different estimators because there's statistical fluctuations. And then we're going to get a whole range of DIs. So maybe we might do this 1,000 or 10,000 times, obviously, on a computer. And then we would see what does the distribution of DIs look like. And we would use that to um, make a conclusion about how good our original fit was. So we'll define p, this will be a p-value, as the fraction of di's that are greater than or equal to d. So d, that was our original distance, our original distance between the data and the model, some sense of how good that fit was. So now this lets us, um, gives us a criteria for saying, all right, is that d to be expected or not? So the larger p is, the more unlikely it would have been to get a d that was this small, that was this good. So, um, so let me let me write that out. So a large p means that it's unlikely to get such a good original fit by chance. If d is small compared to most of the di's, that means that um, d is in a sense. Uh, Improbable. So I think of di as, as the uh, sort of, well, I don't think of it as it is the distribution of distances you would get if you uh, try to fit over and over and over again with n data points to a power law with an exponent of alpha hat. Um, and so if there's a large spread there, a lot of large di values compared to this then that says, well, actually, this is a lot smaller than one would have expected by chance. Therefore, that means it's unlikely you'll get such a good original fit by chance. In other words, it's a good fit. And so you would interpret, in this case, a large p-value as evidence in support of a power law. So um, this is a little bit backwards from how p-values are, are often first encountered. 
where small p-values mean something good or significant has happened. Here it's a large p-value that means that something good or significant um, has happened, where good in this context means, yes, it, there is evidence in support of a power law. Okay, so let me try recapping um, really quickly just what the, what the logic was. We start with data points. We do a fit. We say, how good a fit is it? Well, we can calculate the distance between the data and the model. But then we realize, wait a minute, I don't know what sort of scale to use for D. What's a large D? What's a small D? What would I expect for D? I don't know. And then we say, well, I, uh, let's just simulate it. So we simulate this process of, of um, estimating alpha hat and x min again and again and again from a synthetic data set with this. And that gives us a range of D values. And then that says, gee, is our D, the D value we actually saw from our data, is that small compared to all those D values? In which case, hey, it's a good fit. Probably is well described by a power law. Or is it large compared to all those D values? Or is it sort of typical? In which case, hmm, maybe it's not such a good fit. So, um, so this is an approach to goodness of fit. And again, this is an important part of statistical inference. Um, it's one thing to fit a curve, but once you fit a curve to a data, data set, and, and this is true for power laws or linear functions or anything, you want some criteria for determining whether or not that fit is any good. And the approach that I've just described, and it's in more detail in the closet paper, um, is a really good way to do it for power laws.